Okay, so I had a bunch of people reach out to me about my last video and offer some great suggestions I wanted to try and show everybody uh, what happens. So I still have my output going to my input one as my reference from the software itself. And then I have this output two is going down to the amp, which is on the flat setting. Uh, and that is going to the speaker driver. And then out of the speaker driver now, I'm going into just a couple of, um, I'm just using the um, 10 kilo ohm resistors here to then go into input three of the Yamaha unit. So the first thing we'll look at is the output of the amp from the speaker terminals going into the Yamaha unit compared to just the Yamaha unit output going into the Yamaha unit. Here's some pink noise. All right, so I paused the graph so that I can turn the pink noise off and actually talk. Um, very, very flat frequency response, couple of dB shy, way, way down at the bottom there. Um, and then as far as um, the phase response, well, this is just the result of, you know, a little bit of delay. So I'm actually gonna add a little bit of um, delay to the signal. Now, once again, I've paused the graph so I can turn the noise off. Um, looks like pretty flat phase response down to about 20. Below that, we start to get some shift. Now, what's interesting is, you know, people pointed out amplifiers output both voltage and current, and those two can get off from each other in terms of their phase. Well, this is a voltage reading and you know it's pretty pretty linear uh, I don't have a device for reading current but we'll get to that in a second okay so we're back to playing our DC click and you can see on the graph here the white is the reference from the actual output of the Yamaha unit the red is the reference from the output of the amp going through the speaker and then into my little you know thing I made up and then the gray is the microphone. You can see here, if I take the microphone and I lift it way above my head, it gets kind of delayed, okay? You can also see, see how the red is a little bit behind because there's some latency to the amplifier. Um, again, what I'm gonna do here is just add a little bit of delay to compensate for the latency of the amp. And you can see it all kind of jumps right in time. And if I get the microphone real, real close to the dust cap, they're basically all right in time with each other. Okay, I've turned off the microphone reading for now, so we're just looking at the white and red. You can see down around 20 hertz here. The red leads a little bit. That's because on the phase graph we saw earlier, the amplifier has a little bit of phase shift at you know, 20 hertz. Um, up around 100 hertz, it's, it's very, um, very in phase. And 100 hertz and above, you can see like all the way up to Anyway, so there's with the microphone reading at 20 hertz. Again, not the phase response I would expect. Um, let's go up in frequency. So there's like 100 hertz, almost in phase. There's like 160 hertz, looks totally in phase. And if we just keep going up in frequency, we can see that the phase of the microphone just keeps falling behind and behind. Some people were asking about the mic positioning. They were saying I've got it kind of up like this and you know it might matter if I move it down closer or whatever, have it over to the side. Or... I want to point out that even way up here at 600 hertz, if I take the mic and move it from here all the way down to there, you can see the difference. So it's at the normal spot there. And if I move it towards the dust cap, Moving it back, moving it way over to the side, it doesn't really change much. Now if I lift it way above my head, you can see that it undergoes a lot of obvious phase shift, like a full 360 degrees at these higher frequencies. I'll bring it back down. There it's right above the dust cap. So that does matter. So it's important that I have the mic 
very, very close, but this little difference here, even up at 600 hertz, doesn't really matter that much for the accuracy of the reading for our purposes, and how much less would it matter at lower frequencies. So back to playing some pink noise, and we're looking at the mic compared to the original reference. Uh, let me stop playing the pink noise there. We can see here the frequency response of, of the driver, more or less, and the phase response. And again, this is, this is the mic compared to the original reference from the first video. Um, and that's, you know, obviously just not expected. So I'm going to switch now, and we're going to look at the amplifier as the reference. Okay, so turn this off. So we can see that the white and the gray traces are very, very similar. Um, that's because the amp output is very flat from a frequency standpoint, and then of course the phase response is also basically the same. So it gets a little bit off down super low, um, you know, but uh, this range right here is what we care about, and it's identical. So this test really confirms that from a, a voltage standpoint, um, there's really no difference um, changing the reference. Um, it's the same, same reading we're getting. So a couple of thoughts so far about all of this. Um, many people pointed out after my first video that the speaker is driven primarily by current, not by voltage. And that it's possible, in fact likely, it might be happening right now. I don't have a way to read the current, but the current can get off in terms of its phase from, from the voltage out of the amp. This is, this is possible, but um, I also think that right now it doesn't matter, and here's why. Because all we need to do is find one frequency that no matter how the driver is being driven or when it's being driven, in fact I could just sit here and move the driver with my hand as long as I'm doing it in time to some reference, which in this case was the voltage from the LEDs in the slow motion camera. We've time aligned the motion of the driver to that and we've time aligned the reading of the microphone to that with a DC click sound. Um, and any variances, by the way, in my time alignment there um, are so negligible compared to the time that these super low frequencies take to develop. I mean, even if I'm off by a little bit, um, you're not even going to see it at low frequencies like 20 hertz. So you would expect that if we have found a frequency that's time aligned to our reference, that the microphone would produce an in-phase reading at that frequency. Well, the microphone doesn't, so what is going on? Another interesting observation that's worth exploring, perhaps, is you know, some people pointed out that a lot of FFT analyzers, um, like Smart or, or the one that I'm using, SignalScope Pro and others, use certain mathematical algorithms to determine what the phase of frequencies is. And so maybe it's the case that just the way they wrote the equations for this software are using some other type of algorithm to determine what the phase is that's messing up the reading. Um, that's interesting, but also we are using the oscilloscope feature, which is simply a straight voltage in at this time. Uh, it's, it's not calculating phase or anything like this. It's just saying, here's the raw reading of the mic. Uh, so we sort of uh, avoid that problem in a sense. And also when we do flip over to the phase graph, it does represent what we saw on the oscilloscope. And for good measure, I switched out the microphones to other microphones. Some, some of them were non-test microphones, um, kick drum microphones. I've tried everything. It's, it produces the same result across the board. Um, someone pointed out that microphones are derivative uh, devices. They, they're, they're not actually picking up the motion of the driver, like a laser measure or a physical relay would. They are picking up the changes in air pressure the driver makes, which is a derivative. Um, and if you map it out, sort of theoretically, this would produce a positive 90 degree phase shift at all frequencies from the microphone reading. It's like, okay, well that's, that's interesting, but that's not really what we're seeing here. We're seeing a negative phase shift that's increasing per frequency. Um, anyway, someone uh, want to explain this in a YouTube comment and make me feel like an idiot and go rethink my whole life? That would be great. Thanks.